So why do we need these tests? So they've been used historically for different purposes. Um, we've used these to select dogs for different uses, such as working dogs, service dogs, uh, identifying uh, appropriate breeding animals. Uh, we've used it in shelter medicine mainly to prevent aggression, uh, adoption of aggressive dogs. Uh, as you can imagine, this is a major public safety, safety concern. Uh, we're also using them to try to identify at-risk dogs, so those who uh, may have potential uh, behavior uh, issues that will occur in the home other than aggression. And then we can make educated adoption recommendations, so fitting that animal to the appropriate type of home or setting up rehabilitation if that's an option where you are. Um, they've also even been used as diagnostic tools, uh, so we may be looking for indicators of disease such as cognitive dysfunction or looking at it as an indicator of welfare. And when we're looking at the tests that are available, they've tried to classify them into four different types of tests. And so we have your traditional test batteries, which most of you are going to be most familiar with, uh, where we actually take a pet and expose it to a variety of different specific stimuli that we actually create artificially, and then we record that dog's reactions in that situation. Uh, there's also uh, rating an individual dog, and that's where we get information from that individual pet's behavior historically from some type of informant. And that can be anything from the owner, the former owner who's relinquishing the animal, uh, a handler, or even a caretaker of that animal. We also have expert reading of breed prototypes. And essentially, this is where we take someone who's considered an expert, and that can be rather subjective. Uh, so someone like a veterinarian or a dog trainer or even an AKC uh, show judge. And they, those people are asked to describe, rank, and or rate different types of breeds as a whole rather than looking at individual animals. And so you can certainly think of uh, some potential subjective issues with that type of uh, classification. And then you have your observational test, which is where you take a dog and expose it to a natural uh, environment where you're not controlling what's happening here and there. Uh, and then you record the behavior that you see upon that. And so it's a little harder to control. But this is actually something that's used fairly often when we're looking at service dogs. <coughs> 